Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, Japanese sword mounting. Okay, so let's start out with some definitions. What do we mean when we talk about mounting a Japanese sword? I know what you're thinking. Put that out of your head. So the mounting of a Japanese sword basically just means the scabbard and the handle. Now, in most uh, traditions, say in, in the West or in the Middle East, the handle of the sword was an integral part of the sword itself. But in Japan, the handle could be removed, whether for repair of the handle, replacement of the handle, or just as a sort of fashion accessory, you could change the colors or whatever. Same deal with the scabbard, obviously. You could take the sword out and you could change out to a different, uh, different color or whatever. So today, we're just going to kind of have an overview Here's how the Japanese uh, sword is mounted. It's not really a how-to per se, but it'll just kind of lead you through the basic uh, steps of making the handle and the scabbard of a Japanese sword. One of the many unique features of the Japanese sword is that it's made separately from its mounts, that is the handle and sheath, which can be completely separated from the blade. This video will show the mounting of a pair of Japanese blades, one a long katana, the other a short tanto. These two blades were not forged as a pair, but were mounted together as a pair. This was actually fairly typical in Japanese history. This pairing is known as a daisho, and was typically carried by samurai in the form of two blades which were worn tucked into the belt together. During the video, we'll jump in and out of the mounting of both blades to show different aspects of the mounting process. Historically, there's great variation in the mounting of Japanese blades, so there isn't really one single way of doing it, but this will show a fairly representative process. These two blades were mounted for a long time martial artist, and so there were some minor refinements aimed specifically at making the swords particularly susceptible to hard use. These included reversing the normal placement of the minuki or handle decorations from their normal locations. But basically, these are pretty representative Japanese sword mounts. There are a number of fittings made from copper, including the habaki, the fuchi, the kashira, the manuki, as well as brass seppa, and several other fittings made from water buffalo horn, which were all custom made for this project. Additionally, the iron guard, or tsuba, was carved specifically for this mount. But this video won't go into the making of the fittings. Instead, we'll start by viewing the woodwork. The basic principles behind the scabbard, or saya as it's known in Japanese, and the handle, or tsuka, are essentially the same. Two paired pieces of wood are cut from a sizable master, plain flat, and then chosen to find pieces that are straight grained and not free. After planing, the handle and scabbard pieces are cut roughly into handle and scabbard blanks. Then the shape of the blade and the tang are traced onto the interior surfaces of the two matching blanks. Using a specialized chisel intended specifically for scabbard making, a channel exactly conforming to the profile of the blade and tang are carved from the blanks. The tsuka must be carved with zero play, exactly matching the face of the tang so that the sword won't wobble during use, while the saya must be carved just slightly oversized so that the blade will only touch the scabbard at the tip and at the habaki or retaining collar. This way the blade won't get scratched up by rubbing inside the saya. To do this properly requires great patience and attention to detail so that each part fits very precisely. Once the carving is complete, the two halves are glued and carefully clamped. Even the slightest shift or creep between the two pieces can make the scabbard unusable because the sword will no longer fit inside properly. After the interior woodwork, both the scabbard and handle are planed and carved to shape using a variety of tools, 
including specialized curved planes made for planing interior surfaces. Once the exterior has been carved and sanded, a small eyelet known as a kurigata is installed into a channel carved into the wood. This tiny fitting, carved from water buffalo horn, is then glued into place. Next, the handles carved to fit the copper caps, known as the fuchi and the kashira. Great care has to be taken in locating the face of the fuchi so that the handle and the sword guard known as the tsuba will fit flush to the mouth of the saya. Even an error in angle of half a degree, or an error in length of a few thousandths of an inch, will lead to an unsightly gap between the scabbard and the handle. Additionally, a hole is drilled through the handle through which the retaining peg known as the makugi will be driven. Again, this has to be executed with great precision or the handle will rattle and move around, compromising the safe function of the sword. The tsuka core is carefully rebated in the middle to accept a piece of untanned manta ray skin, which will face the wood. In lower quality mounts, the manta ray skin is often simply glued to the face of the handle in small strips. But in high quality mounts, the ray skin encircles the entire handle, making a sort of composite structure which is far stronger than a simple wooden handle. This enormously hard and durable skin not only serves to reinforce the handle, but also to secure as a ground for the silk braid, which will later be twisted around the handle. This rebating has to be done to precisely match the variations in thickness of the ray skin. The skin is soaked until it softens, cut to shape, then wrapped tightly around the handle so that it dries to fit the tsuka core. A seam will run down the back of the suka, so after the skin has dried, it has to be trimmed very carefully. In this case, it was trimmed to a tolerance of roughly two thousandths of an inch, so as to make the gap between the two sides of the skin as tight and unobtrusive as possible. In the case of the Tonto, we'll stop here, leaving the handle composed of bare ray skin its ends capped with a buffalo horn fuchi and kashira pair, both of which are buffed to a high sheen. The katana, on the other hand, will be taken one step further. Once the ray skin, or same, is trimmed and glued, the suka is wrapped in about 15 feet of suka ito, a silk braid. In the process, the copper fittings are secured to the handle so that it is now one tight, durable unit which can be secured to the tang of the blade with a peg known as a makugi. In this case, the standard positions of both the handle decorations known as the manuki and the makugi that we've already discussed have been reversed for martial arts use. The placement of the swordsman's hand will put the manuki into his palms this way for greater comfort. Additionally, in this configuration, the swordsman's palm covers the mikugi so that it can't inadvertently fall out during use, a problem which could obviously lead to disastrous results in the form of a razor-sharp blade flying across a room. Now, returning to the saya, the scabbard is lacquered with six or seven layers of blue lacquer, then around ten layers of clear lacquer. Traditionally, a lacquer known as urushi was used. 
Urushi is both poisonous and very slow drying. So in this case, nitrocellulose lacquer of the sort used on high quality stringed instruments is used instead. The scabbard is left to dry for several weeks, then is meticulously hand sanded to around 1500 grit, then buffed to a high shine. The result is a hard, durable, and waterproof surface. Two washers known as SEPA have already been fabricated to sandwich the tsuba between the handle and the habaki. Over time, the wooden parts will wear in and the SEPA can be replaced with slightly thicker washers which will tighten up the mount again. And here's the final result. Hope you're enjoying this series of videos. Uh, if you did, check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, uh, where you'll find lots more videos in this vein, along with plenty of examples of my own work. Also, like my page, Walter Sorrels Blades, on Facebook. Thanks for watching.